Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, I am going to walk you through the entire process of installing Ubuntu 2010, which was recently released. And we're going to take a look at the entire process in this video. Now, if you have already seen me walk you through this process for a previous version of Ubuntu, then I'll save you the trouble because really nothing much has changed. It's essentially the same thing yet again. But I do like to keep these videos updated as I can, so I figured I would create an updated version for Ubuntu 2010. So let's go ahead and check out the installation process and get Ubuntu 2010 set up on our computer. After you boot from the USB installation media, this is the first screen that you'll see. It's giving you an option to try Ubuntu or go straight to the installation. Now regardless of the Linux distribution, I always recommend that you try it first, which will allow you to demo the distro before you install it. So that way, if there's any incompatibility with your hardware, you will know that before you go ahead and install. You should literally never install any Linux distribution until after you've verified that everything works. And that includes Wi-Fi, multiple displays, audio, and so on. So I will click Try Ubuntu. So here we're actually running Ubuntu from the flash drive without actually having it installed. And again, it's time to go ahead and test it out to make sure that everything works. Now keep in mind that in live mode it might run a little bit slower than it would if you had it installed on your actual hardware. But at the very least, you'll have an opportunity to make sure that everything works. So, for example, the first thing that we should do is activate Wi-Fi if we have a Wi-Fi card, since this is a laptop. I will go ahead and do that right now. Then up here on the upper right corner, where it shows Wi-Fi not connected, if we click on that, if our Wi-Fi card is working, we should at least see a list of the Wi-Fi networks in our general vicinity. So I will select a network, and there you go. And that's a good sign. It's showing some Wi-Fi networks here. So I will click on mine just to make sure that it works. The Wi-Fi icon here is completely solid, so that should mean that we are connected. So if I bring up the web browser, Firefox comes default with Ubuntu. We should be able to visit a website and ensure that it's working. And there you go. So my website comes up just fine. And I know that the Wi-Fi connection is actually working. And then you should also test your audio as well. You could just play any video just to make sure that you are able to hear the audio. If you have multiple displays, you should make sure that you are able to get a display on both monitors. And if all of those check out and all of your hardware is detected, that includes printers if you have one, then you should be able to go ahead and install. Now on the desktop, we have this icon right here to install Ubuntu, and then it gives you the version number. So I will double click on that. Now we're going to get a few screens that allow us to configure the language. In my case, it defaults to English. If your primary language is something else, go ahead and select that in the list right in here, and then click Continue. Next, we are able to select the keyboard layout, which defaults to English US in my case. If your keyboard is something else, you can go ahead and choose that here. And you can also go ahead and type in here to ensure that your keys are working as they should. And now we have some options here. So we could do a normal installation or a minimal installation. I recommend that most people do a normal installation. The benefit of the minimal installation is that it includes fewer pre-installed apps by default. You still get a web browser and what they call basic utilities, but notice that right here we have office software listed, we have games, media players, and whatnot, but we don't have those things listed here. So if you wanted to have a minimal installation so that you can choose your own software for those categories, you can do that. I'm going to leave it on normal installation as you see here. Now this checkbox right here allows you to download updates while it's installing. Probably not a bad idea. You should definitely always keep your installation up to date. I'm going to uncheck that box because for me all that's going to do is lengthen the recording. And then this second checkbox right here is giving you an option to install third-party software. I do recommend that everyone select that unless you have reason not to. 
It's just going to install things that gives you additional compatibility with media formats and things like that. So there's no reason not to select that. But again, in my case, since I'm just giving you guys a tutorial and I'm not actually going to use this installation, I'm going to leave that unchecked. So I'll click continue. Now this particular laptop already has an operating system installed. I'm going to do a full install. It goes without saying, but I have to give you the disclaimer that if you do choose the option to erase the disk and install Ubuntu, it's going to do exactly that. It's going to actually erase the disk. So if that's not what you want, or if you haven't already backed up all of your important files and settings, then I recommend you quit the installation. The quit button is right here. Go and back it up or whatever you have to do to be comfortable actually erasing the disk. And then we can continue. Now we do have some advanced features here that we can choose if we'd like. For example, we can use LVM and we can also use ZFS. LVM and ZFS are beyond the scope of this video, so I'm not going to choose those. But in your case, if that was something that you wanted to experiment with, you can go ahead and do that. So again, in this tutorial, we are erasing the entire disk. This is going to be a full install. I have Pop! OS installed currently, and that is going to be blown away with the new version of Ubuntu that I am installing right now. It's going to be a full, clean install, so I'll click Install Now. And it's going to give me a confirmation. It's going to show me how it's going to partition the disk. And it gives me one last chance to back out if I want to abort the process, but I'll continue. On this screen right here, we can choose where our geographic location actually is, which will set our time zone and locale settings. I am actually closer to Detroit, so I just clicked here on the map to put this red dot pointing down onto Michigan, where it shows Detroit and you could choose wherever on the globe you happen to be. I have viewers all over the world, which is really awesome. So just choose the location that best matches where you are. And then here you fill out the information for your primary user account. I'll just keep it simple and type my name right there. I'll leave this alone. That's just the computer name that'll show up if you set up networking or anything like that. This is the actual username that you will log in with. Normally for the name you put your first and last name here, but I just kept it simple. And then here we choose a password. And then we can use Active Directory if we have that set up, if that's something that we want to connect to. I don't have that, so I won't check that box. We can also make it log in automatically. I don't recommend that unless this is like a kiosk machine or it doesn't have any private data whatsoever. So I will continue. And now Ubuntu 2010 is installing. It has this little slideshow here that gives you an overview of some of the features in Ubuntu. I will leave it up to you if you want to go ahead and click through that. But I'll let this continue and then I'll be right back. All right, so here we are. The installation is complete. We could continue to play around with the live environment if we'd like by clicking continue testing. But if you actually want to use the new installation, click restart now. That'll reboot the machine. And I'll remove the flash drive and press enter. And now we're booting up. So right now I see the login screen, but my screen recorder isn't able to capture it. So I typed in my password and now here we are at the first screen that'll appear after installation. If you have any of these accounts right here that you want to go ahead and sign into, you could do that. It'll integrate some of the alerts and calendars and things like that. So it's a good idea to sign in if you use one of those services, but I'll skip it for now. And here we have a screen that gives us the option to send some information to Ubuntu to help them improve Ubuntu for all of us. And, you know, keep in mind that the cost of Ubuntu is free. So by providing this information, you are helping the project. And you can also click on the button right here to show the first report if you are curious what that contains. And you can scroll through the information here. So it's showing me some information about the actual laptop itself, the number of cores that it has, the vendor, the CPU, the GPU, and so on. So as you can see, nothing here is specific to me personally. So there's no reason not to do that. And I will just leave it here where it says yes to send that information to Canonical. Then it gives us an option to enable location services, which are disabled by default. 
If you plan to use any map utilities or anything like that, it might be a good idea to turn that on, but I'll just go ahead and leave that blank. And finally, we have some icons here for some very popular applications that we can choose to install. I'll click Done. And then here we have a message that there's actually some updates with Ubuntu 2010 that have been released since Ubuntu 2010 was released, which was actually yesterday. So, you know, the updates just keep on coming. And because I didn't choose the option to install updates during the installation of Ubuntu itself, it's giving me the option to do that now. So I'll click Install Now to make sure I have all of the updates. You can see the progress here on the left. I can click on it if I want to see what it's up to. But as we see here, the software has been updated and we are now free to use Ubuntu 2010 and you can go ahead and give it a shot. I hope this was helpful for you guys. So there you go. That was my overview of the installation process for Ubuntu 2010. I hope that was helpful. If you like this video, please click that like button because that lets YouTube know that you want to see more content just like this. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. I have some awesome things coming very soon. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video. I'll see you again real soon.